Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the new processors from AMD. We are very excited to bring you a review, which is not something we normally do, but you know what? Might as well, because we really like budget hardware. But before we dive into this review, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? Hey guys, Editing Mad here. I just finished editing the video you're about to see and wanted to add a couple of notes real quick. One, the benchmarks that we ran, yes, there is overclockability support on the Ryzen 3 3100, but we did not do any overclocking because we just wanted to show out of the box performance. We will leave links to some other reviewers that we are good friends with and down below who actually did some overclocking results with the Ryzen 3 3100 and do expect in our full PC build coming soon, we will be overclocking the 3100 to get the maximum performance out of it. Secondly, the first part of this review is talking about the future of AM4 B550 and some updates that came alongside the launch of these CPUs. So if you want to skip through that, totally understand. Feel free to skip to the part of the review. But long story short, very impressed with these processors. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised with how good these things are for how cheap they are. AMD is really killing it in the budget processor department. But don't let me spoil it any longer. Let's get back to that review, shall we? So as many of you know, AM4 has been around for quite some time now, 2016 to 2020, and it's going to keep going, which is pretty awesome because this is one of the longest running sockets that we've seen in a long time from AMD or really any other CPU manufacturer for that matter. And it's also going to allow us for some really cool new features. One of those new cool chipsets on the AM4 platform is gonna be B550. Now, yes, this is primarily a review of the new Ryzen 3 chips, but as a part of this announcement, AMD is gonna be releasing B550 motherboards. Now, the main reason why I'd go B550 over B450 is mainly PCI Gen 4 support. We don't have our hands on a B550 board yet, but you know, we will probably have a PC build in the future using a B550 board, so hit the subscribe button if you do wanna check that out. But generally, it's gonna be a PCI Gen 4 motherboard that's gonna start around $100, which is a little bit more than your average B450 board. It'll be pretty interesting to check out once we get our hands on them. So as you guys know, we really love the B450 boards because, well, they're just such a good value and they support first, second, and third gen at the moment. Well, that is gonna change a little bit. We're gonna have to start loving the B550s because the X570 and the B550 are the only ones confirmed to actually support third gen on up to fourth and whoever knows what generations after that. And that is a good thing and a bad thing. It does show that AM4 is still going to be supported. So if you built a brand new system right now using an X570 board, you can know for sure the next CPU launch will be supported. And if you do build a future B550 system, it will be supported. So we have two new processors currently coming out. They're actually going to be third gen architecture. And as the Ryzen 3100 and the Ryzen 3300X, they're both four core eight thread processors. But there's one thing that makes them a little bit different that Matt's gonna talk about. So on paper, it might look like the main difference between the 3100X and the 3300X is the clock speed, but actually there is an architectural difference between these two processors. So the core configuration on the Ryzen 3 3100 uses two active CCXs, which basically has two cores and two threads per CCX, which is an okay design. But to make it way more efficient, they put all four cores and eight threads on a single CCX die, which will allow for, in theory, better performance and less latency when actually doing compute tasks. So it's not just a core clock difference between the 3100 and 3300X, there's actually an architectural difference between the two. Now, does that translate to really big performance gains. When we dive into the benchmarks here in a second, you'll see that, you know what? It wasn't that significant of a difference, but there is still a difference for why you should go for the 3300X, especially if you're playing games that benefit from higher clock speed CPUs. So now that we've talked about the new things coming from AMD with their new motherboards, let's talk about the performance numbers for the 3100 and the 3300X. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. We decided to test these processors up against some other options from AMD that we had on hand. We used a 1700X to see 
if there is a significant gaming performance boost from an eight core 16 threaded CPU back in first gen compared to a third gen processor that only has four cores and eight threads to show the benefit of IPC improvement. And then we decided to test it with the Ryzen 3 3200G, which is a quad core CPU, which at the time we're recording this video is around the exact same price as something like the Ryzen 3 3100. And we just wanted to see what kind of performance you get from getting third gen Ryzen and those extra threads. Now, if you want some more benchmarks, we only ran a couple of tests so we can get through some numbers. We're gonna be doing builds for each one of these processors coming soon. So be sure you're subscribed if you wanna check that video out. But Jackson's gonna go ahead and go over the general consensus of what we saw in the results. Across all four processors that we tested, we used the exact same hardware to keep con results consistent. So we have an XFX, 5600 XT over here, really good card, nice mid-range, like 2060 level. This is the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, a really kind of oddball X370 board, but hey, it actually worked for all these. And then we had 16 gigs of pretty decent memory that was only at 2933 because it wouldn't handle the XMP. This board's kind of weird. So we weren't able to quite get it up to the 3000 plus level, but we still had a pretty respectable speed. And honestly, with the results, it is extremely impressive to see that the 3100 and the 3300X actually beat the 1700X. So obviously it beat the 3200G as well. Uh, most games we saw 10 to like 40 FPS higher than we did over the 1700X, which is Literally insane to think this eight core 16 thread processor that's still totally respectable. We're seeing worse results than this little, you know, $100 3100 and $129 3300 X. Now, some notes to mention about our testing methodology. The main concept we went with was with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we are running on a mixture of high medium-ish settings that were optimized when you launched the game using the 5600 XT. And those settings were locked throughout the benchmark run. And we are using the bot mode for Warzone, which normally has slightly higher FPS in the actual game, so do keep that in mind, but we did it for consistency's sake, and it did show across the board that the 3300X and 3100 had higher FPS numbers, and the same thing goes for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We actually ran that on highest settings, which was more GPU bound in this situation, but we still saw an increase of FPS across the board with the CPUs, and lastly, with Rainbow Six Siege, we ran this on all low settings to make it more CPU bound so we can actually see these CPUs stretch their legs. And again, we saw increased numbers across the board. So all three situations gave this graphics card and the CPU configuration optimal chances to show, well, how good it is. And overall, it came out showing that the 3300X and 3100 were really, really good CPUs for the money. One thing that we would eventually like to do, which maybe we'll get our hands on eventually, is a 3400G because that is actually a four core, eight thread APU that is supposed to be kind of similar to these, but we expect to see better performance out of these processors that are also a little bit cheaper. We'd also like to test out the 1600AF because as you guys know, it's basically a 2600, which is should be a little bit better than the 1700X as far as gaming goes, but we weren't able to do that for this test, so we had to do some oddball uh, processors. But nonetheless, 1700X was beat by these way cheaper processors, so that just shows that AMD has really stepped up their game. And we're excited to see what the new 4th gen stuff has to offer once that stuff comes out. So one last thing to note that we would actually love to see is, as you guys know, the reason the X570 and the B550s are going to support third, fourth gen on up is because the BIOS ROM can actually handle that size of storage. While the B350s, B450s and whatnot, they already have first, second and third gen, which is awesome that they fit all those on there, but you can only fit so much on there to where they can't fit fourth gen on it. So one thing that we would love to see, and you know, maybe uh, AMD could do something crazy like this, is with the B450s stop supporting first gen after a certain amount of time Time to where if you want to go with the first gen processor, you just need to flash your BIOS back, but then the future BIOS updates actually support fourth gen. That would be awesome to see, but that's also asking a lot. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what the table brings. But overall, very impressed with these processors. We're very excited to do dedicated builds on these very, very soon. One might be a good idea for an entry-level streaming PC because four cores and eight threads might not be too bad compared to something like the 1600 AF, which is almost impossible to get right now. So do keep a lookout for those videos, probably hitting your sub boxes very soon because you should be subscribed. And also speaking of being subscribed, don't forget to check us out on twitch.tv slash Toasty Bridge using this beautiful link right here. And also Toasty DIY and Toasty Clips to see some really awesome other YouTube videos that we do. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one.